Welcome to the BIF Talks of the 36th Braunschweig International Film Festival. We talk with our guests about their film projects, the filmmaking process, and we take a closer look behind the scenes. My name is Julia Rutkowska, and I'm very honored to welcome director Peter Strickland. Thank Hello. you for taking your time. Thank you. Thanks. Peter, you're a master of contemporary art house film. The BIF dedicated a whole section to you, Peter Strickland at midnight. Um, it's the first uh, retrospective in Germany. You created short films, a concert documentary, features, but you never attended film school. How did your passion for film start and how did you make your first steps as a filmmaker? Um, well, I was a film fan like most people. I, I, would, but I didn't think I would make films. It wasn't until I was 16 I used to make pretend films up in my head and then I realized okay maybe I could do this but I watched a razor head uh, which kind of changed my life it it forced me into this new path um, it just changed the way I saw things the way I heard things uh, and then I just bought a super 8 camera um, filmed these little three minute almost like test pieces really until I was confident enough to make a little short film in 1992. Um, I tried to get into film school, I didn't work. But then I just kept making stuff bit by bit, then moved to 16 mil and just practice, you know, practice. And I'm still, still practicing. So it worked out uh, very well without the education at a film school. Yeah, well, I would have gone, but <laughs> I couldn't get in. So, uh, I mean, I'm missing this formal training, which is not a big deal, but there are ways I work which are not professional, which maybe by accident give the films something different, but it's not by design. Um, but yeah, I, I still, it's a part of me that wishes I, did, I had gone to film school and learnt more specific things. Yeah, but I think filming is still learning by doing all the time, so... Yeah, you're always, always, always learning, especially now with technology changing all the time. You have to constantly re-educate yourself. So um, music and sound is also a very important part of storytelling. One of your features is called Barbarian Sound Studio. It's about a sound engineer in a post-production studio. Um, what does sound and music mean to you? How much do you get involved in these parts of your film? Well, with music, not so much, because I'm not a musician, so I, I learned the best thing is to let go to... It's all in the casting, not the casting, that's the wrong word, but finding the right people that are going to work with you, um, people whose sensibility you trust. Uh, I think once you've found the right people, you just leave them to it. Obviously, you have some ideas and regarding the editing of, of tracks and so on. Um, at the beginning, I was very led by references, which I didn't think was a, was a good thing. Um, I think bands prefer it to be, not to be <laughs> presented with a piece of music to copy. That's just not the way to do it. Um, so I learned to just talk about more, talk about tonal things more, talk about the mood of music more, not about chord changes and this, this kind of thing. Um, sound, I'm more active in sound, um, so I'm usually there. I'm not the one pushing the buttons, but I'm there in the studio guiding it. But it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a process, it's a collaborative process. It, only, it can only work if you're all there, or every day. The mixer, the designer, the director, um, and a lot of it's just trial and error. But I think you have to be there every day, because if you're just presented with a mix, it's hard to know or pinpoint a problem, but if you've been there, you can easily say, right, track eight, this bit here is not working, if you can mute that. But I enjoy that, I enjoy it a lot. It's, um, I prefer it to filmmaking. I prefer it to, to actually shooting, I mean, because shooting is very, very stressful, whereas sound mixing is not at all. Uh, speaking of finding the right people, uh, how do you find your team, your crew? Um, well, some of them I know, and I just, Known them from very early on. Other people come through recommendations. With the last film, because there was a bottleneck of filming post lockdown, the people we wanted were not available. No one was available, basically. 
so a lot of the people in this new film I never worked with before um, but they were great really really talented and full of ideas and easy going it was a very tough shoot because it was 14 days um, so this was unusual it was all new people but it, it worked just about you already did an interview for our printed Biff Journal, um, where you explained that you still make short films because you see them as an opportunity to um, try out new ideas or ideas that, that don't work for feature films. Trying out new ideas often means also failing. What were projects, ideas that didn't went the way you wanted at all, and what did you learn from that? Well, many failed. Um, many short films, many feature films have failed. Um, I don't know what I've learned. Um, I'm, sure I've, I'm sure I've learned something. Um, yeah, things just don't work out. I, I wrote a script and I was, I think by the third draft I realized ah, it's just, just not, not working and uh, I even did a short film which, I, which, which we shot and I just realized I wasn't happy with it. Uh, it's hard to know. Um, yeah, it's hard, hard to put into words. Just some things just don't work out, and I think it's, you know it. Hopefully, early on enough to just stop. Um, if you've shot a feature film, it's very difficult to stop it. Well, mind you, we've heard about some feature films recently where they just pull the plug. But uh, with a short film, it's a bit easier because the budget is usually lower. Not always. And you haven't put that much effort in. Or, 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 or money. Or yeah. money, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's also, also an aspect. Um, we're very honored that you're here at the Braunschweig International Film Festival right uh -huh. now. Um, you get around a lot as a successful filmmaker. You meet a new lot of people. Uh, is there somebody in the film industry you haven't met yet and you would like to get to know? Um, well, there are many directors, yeah. Um, You know, my heroes when I was growing up. You know, I never met David Lynch. Um, so, um, yeah, um, but you can't keep traveling because you don't get any work done. So it's, it's a tricky one. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy not to meet my heroes. Sometimes I have met some heroes and it was, um, it was disappointing. Yeah, sometimes uh, you just make up that image and then you meet them in person and it's not like you imagined. They're just, yeah. you know, yeah, rude, whatever, <laughs> uh, which is fine, you know, we, we're all rude sometimes. So, um, yeah, I, 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 when I was younger, there was a, this fanboy need to meet people, but now it's okay. I'm happy just to go with the flow. And so what are your next plans for the future? Um, I'm just writing at the moment. I'm writing for other directors. I have another job as a as a writer for hire. Uh, so I'm not jumping in, into any new films. I have a couple of leftover projects that I've been working on. Um, I don't know if they're going to happen or not. I have no idea. But the immediate thing is to um, deliver three scripts for different people, which I'm not going to direct. I'm just handing them in for others. Quite a lot to do. So Quite a lot to do, yeah. 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 I'm a bit behind, yeah. Peter, thank you for taking your time. Thank and you. we hopefully Thanks. see a lot of more projects from you. Let's see, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but yeah. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you.